A big hello to all of you. Again, coming back with the next part of the video tutorial for pair of so linear equations in two variables. Today we are going to study the third method, that is method of cross multiplication. Right. First of all, I'll explain you in the general sense, but I'll not tell you why and how this method comes. That is not needed here. Uh, whenever you will get into class 11 then automatically you will come to know about uh, the process how it develops right so uh, let's start with let's begin with how to work with this process these are the two equations already we have worked on it earlier now if we use the method of cross multiplication directly we will get an equation of this form right x by b1 c2 minus b2 c1 equals y by c1 a2 minus c2 a1 equals 1 by a1 b2 minus a2 b1 now our uh, weight comes as i told you i'm not going to explain you that that is not required but i'm going to tell you how you can remember this right so for that only one thing you have to remember always the first thing is that you have to keep everything on the left side Right, that's that's the first criteria you try to follow. Am I clear to you? You have to follow this criteria. You have to keep both the equations in such a way that everything is in the left hand side. Right hand side should be absolutely zero. Then you compare the first variable. This should be in the same place. Like here it is x. They are in the same place. Y in the same place, and then the constants. They are in the same place. Relative place, right? Same relative place for both the equations. Uh, then the process how we can remember is this: you first write all the coefficients and the constant term of the first equation, right? Like this, and then you write the coefficients and the constant term of the second equation in the corresponding places. Then you repeat the first one. Repeat the first one here. Is it clear for you? Yeah. So for writing the first part of the whole equations below, you have to omit the coefficient of x. What are the coefficient of x? This particular column is representing the coefficient of x. So you 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 are going to consider only this particular part. Okay, because you have to omit this. Then you follow this particular direction. This is the first stroke you have to make, and then this is the second. Very particularly, you have to follow this, otherwise, you will get wrong, right? You'll get everything wrong. So, you now when you omit this first particular column, then you have to first follow this particular stroke, multiply them, then you'll be getting what? B1, C2. Then the second stroke is this one, it gives you B2, C1, and then put the minus in between. Right, and then whatever you get that you put below x. Did you get me? If not, just replay the video again once more and try to listen to it. Then you come to the another variable y. What is the coefficient of y here? This particular column represents the coefficient of y. So in that case, you omit this particular column and go to the right hand side. This two column you consider, and again the same process you follow, right? This is the first stroke you have to follow, and this is the second one. So first one will give you C1 A2, that's here, and minus C2 A1, that's here. Okay. And as far as the last is concerned, if you're going, if you're going go to omit, if you're going to omit this particular one, then you consider the first two left out, right? And then you multiply this a1 a2 minus a2 sorry a1 b2 minus a2 b1 that's it so our uh, first thing is that you have to write this particular part very clearly right that's the uh, success of the problem once you write it very clearly correctly then very less chances are that you will commit mistake right so now after you write this how do we proceed further for solving the equation for that, what we do, you can see here, these are the two places where variables are present. 
and this is the place where there is no unknown quantities present, right? Because a1, b2, etc. values will be getting from the given equations. So once you come up to this, we are going to compare the ratio, the first ratio with the last one, and the second ratio with the last one. And once we compare the first ratio with the last one, you see, I do not want to write this whole bunch of calculation say this is a will be equal to 1 by say this is capital C we'll be getting like this and then what we are going to do if you do a cross multiplication or rather in short you try to remember in short so that you will not commit any mistake bring this a directly in the place of 1 then you'll be getting the value as a by c so some calculations will be there that you have to perform right and then if you go for the other pair comparison of that so this y is here and supposing that this value comes out to be capital b and then this will be 1 by c again the same process you have to do this b you simply place over here and then you'll be getting the value of y that's it so you are getting both the values of x and y which are forming the combined solution of both the equations right so you wait for some time pause the video just try to rethink whether you have understood everything clearly or not okay if you have understood let's move on to the problem start solving it right okay that is the first problem so uh by method of cross multiplication you have to solve it now at the beginning at the very beginning you try to see at the very beginning you see this equation is not in that form what I ask you to put in there. So first of all you put them in that form it is very much necessary otherwise you will commit mistake right and then we'll just put it in the form what is desired. This is equation 1 this is equation 2. Now let me again tell you everything very clearly that it is not at all necessary that you would point out what is z1, what is a2, etc. Right? This is not at all required. Only thing is that for your own convenience, you rewrite those values here and there up, right? So the coefficients of the first equation is 2, then minus 4, minus 1, and the second equation is 1 here. You can see here with x there is a 1, and then this will be 2 and then minus one okay and then again this first column you have to repeat once more right that's the thing you have to remember okay this was standing for x this is for y this is for the constant term and this is again for x now simply you write directly directly by method of cross multiplication this statement you write because you are doing formally method of cross multiplication what we get we get you write here x that is the first variable then y and then one now for writing something below x what is the process just try to recall it was the process that you have to omit the first column which is corresponding to the variable x then for the other two columns, you have to follow this trick, right? This is the first stroke you have to follow, and then this is the second, and in between minus will be there. So four into minus one, directly will get the result. We need not write the, the term separately. It's four, and then we'll be getting two into minus one, minus two. But because of the minus, right? Or oh, okay, one step I'll write like this: minus of minus two. Now I'm going to write something of the desired quantity below y. So I have to omit this. Then I'll have to apply the same set of operations here. So minus 1 into 1 is giving you minus 1. Minus from the formula. Then minus 1 into 2 is giving you minus of 2. Right? And at last what? A1, B2. Right? So 2, 2, 0, 4. And minus, minus 4 minus minus four that's it so you have done up to this and that's the very important part this is six this y by 
how much it is this is minus 1 and this is plus 2 so minus 1 plus 2 will give you 1 and then this is 1 and this is giving you 8 so now we'll be comparing as I told you we'll be comparing the first with the third and the second with the third right x by 6 will be compared to 1 by 8 and then y by 1 will be compared to 1 by 8 again now look from here as I told you the shortcut the 6 bring down here just in place of 1 and you just make quickly x free so your answer is this and for y this one if you replace here there is no problem it's 1 by 8 only and this can be really simplified so you simplify and get the value of x and y and that's it you are done right so pause the video again i would like to request you pause the video just try to think whether you have understood the complete process or not if not just go through it once more right do not hesitate do not hesitate at all right Okay, so move on to the next problem now. Yes, actually it's useless to completely repeat the whole process every time. So here, this is the only problem I'm going to do, otherwise I'll take some certain problems further, right? So others, other of these kind of problems will be left for you as a more complex problem, right? So here already this is given in the standard form. So I have to only mark what are the coefficients, right? In order this I need again I'll write it this is 3 this is 2 this is minus 4 then again this 3 will come right so at this time I'll not write the statement by method of cross multiplication what I'm going to get y by something x by something and then here it is 1 if I'm going to write something below x I have to omit this and then I have to follow this trick right this is first stroke this is the second stroke and between minus so here minus 5 into 14 how much it is it is 70 minus from the formula and then this will be your minus of 2 correct now you're going to write for y so you'll be multiplying this first that is minus 3 minus from the formula and then again here it is minus of 28 because minus 14 into 2 okay for last one, this is 4, 2 to the 4, and then this is minus, how much it is? Minus of 50, minus of 50, that's it, right? So, you are close to the answer now. This is going to give you 72. This is going to give you how much? It is plus 28, and then it is minus 3. So, giving you 25, 1, and this is going to give you... 90. So, what is x by 72 equals? I will compare it to the third and very similarly, I will be comparing this with this which is completely known. So, now from here, you will be getting the value of x. What will be x equals 72 by 90 and then if any common factor will be there, cancel this. I don't think that that will be cancelled. So, this is the answer, right? So this way you will proceed for finding the cross multiplication methods Friends, with the help of cross multiplication method the solution to linear equations in two variables, right? Generally this method is very comfortable if the numbers which are involved here as a coefficients are smaller, right? So we prefer always to start with cross multiplication method. Otherwise a very general method and very comfortable method is method of comparing coefficients. That is the previous method, which was elimination method, right? Okay, we'll be taking more, more problems. We'll, uh, where we'll be uh, asked to use a suitable method for solving it, right? We'll be trying with those problems in the future. So now, uh, just see these statement problems. Examples. I have more tests. A number of two digit. A number of two digit exceeds the four times the sum of its digits by six and it is increased by nine 
on reversing this disease. Find the number. Okay, first of all, this is a very important problem. Let me mark it. Right? We'll be taking every conditions one by one. We do not discuss both the conditions together. It will be confusing, right? The very first thing is that you are going to talk about a two-digit number. So you must first know what a two-digit number is, right? So you see, a two-digit number has two different places. One is units place, another is tens place. So whenever you are writing the number, remember you have to write both this digits very specifically where it belongs, number one, and number two, the number should be written in the exponent form. Because you are not using geonumerical digits, but you are going to use literal digits, right? So first of all, you fix which particular digit you want to put where. Okay, let me fix. I'll fix x for the 10 digit place and y for the unit digits. So when I write this number in the expanded form, my number will be 10x plus y. 10 times the 10 plus digit, the 1 times the 1 plus digit, and they are to be added, right? Many of the students commit a mistakes by writing it like this. Remember, in algebra, they only mean product x into y, not the number. Am I clear to you? So for a moment, I am explaining. In case of number 39, I can see that this is 10 plus digit and this is 10 plus digit. But the whole background is this. 10 into 10 plus digit plus 1 into 10 plus digit. So in this background, you have tried this number, and then only you will be getting everything correct, right? Okay, let's proceed. We'll start with this supposition first. Lit. The unit place does it be x and tens, ten place, tens place, tens place, it is units, right? Tens plus does it be y. Fine. Therefore, number is number is this is your preliminary things. You have to do this. Okay, sorry. Uh, here I did the reverse. What supposition I make? I made a reverse here. So it will be 10 y plus x. That's better. At least we can experience how the things get changed, right? So here I have considered 10 plus to be y. So it is 10 y plus x. Fine. So this is the number. Before you apply any condition, till here it reaches, right? Now, according to question, condition comes. Now, really, the question try to decode what it says, right? A number of two digit means this number they are talking about exceeds means it is bigger than four times the sum of the digits. That means this is the sum. It is bigger, this number is bigger than this, four times of this, by how much? Six. Which number is bigger? Can you compare? This given number is bigger than this by six. So according to question, obviously, very obviously, the bigger minus the smaller will be giving you the gap. The difference right does it mean the same statement just see once more a number of two digits talking about this exits four times exits means this is bigger than this particular number right four times the sum of the digits by six so this number is bigger than this by six so this minus this will give you six this is one of the equation which you can now simplify so i'll be simplifying it Right, so x minus 4x will be getting this is minus 3x, then 10y minus 4y is going to give you 6y. Right hand side is 6. That's great. There's a common factor 3. Rather, I'll cancel minus 3 from both the sides, right? So it will be minus sorry 1, and then this will be minus of 2y, and this will be minus of 2. So this is equation number 1. This is equation number one okay now what is the other condition says it is increased it is increased means this number increases 
right this number increases it is increased by 9 right increased by 9 on reversing its thesis actually this statement you have to read very tactfully if you read it wrong then your whole conversion will be wrong right it is told that it is increased by 9 it is means the number will be increased by 9 if you reverse the digits if you reverse the digits that means if you exchange the digits whatever new number you obtain will be bigger than the given number by 9 so if i interchange the digit what will be the number i'm going to get interchange the digit means now it will become unit space it will become 10 space this is a new number this is a new number this is a new number this new number is 9 more than the original number 9 more than the original number. Right. Once you reverse the digits, that number gets increased. That becomes bigger right, than the previous one. So now, if you simplify, again try to simplify. This is 10x minus x giving on 9x. Then this is minus 9y equal to 9. So I'll be left out with this. This is equation number 2. Now look here, you are entering two different equations which are in easy form. And now you have to solve. And just to get rid of it, right? The thing is that you see the equations are easier, and the more of a coefficients you will find, many are one. So, I do not suggest you to go through method of cross multiplication, right? It is always better if the coefficients are one, you go for substitution. That's that's a great method, right? Or else you go for elimination method. So, anyway, as I'm discussing cross multiplication, I'll not do that, I'll do it by cross multiplication method only and for that of course I have to bring all this equation in the standard form as I told you otherwise we commit a mistake right yeah we have a process we have a uh, idea to even in this particular form but I'm not taking that so now if you apply the cross multiplication we'll be getting like this right now uh, you can write these first i'll consider this equation the first one that is coefficients of one then minus two then two again one will come then second one is one minus one then minus one and then again one will come and for x you have to multiply this to column that is minus two into minus one giving you two and then this is again plus two okay then y you will multiply this this is 2 then plus 1 and then this will be how much it is minus 1 and then this is going to give you plus 2 great so what you'll get x by 4 equal to y by 3 equals 1 so here it's very easy you compare this with 1 x by 4 equal to 1 that gives you x equal to 4 y equal to 3 so can you now write a number the number is you go back to the original you remember you have to write always the original one so 10 y y is the tens plus digit so our number is 34 number is 34 right great so again i'd like to request you to stop the video for some time try to understand the problem very important problem okay okay uh this is Again, an important problem. See, uh, today I'm considering all the important problems here. There are 38 coins in a collection of 20 paisa coins and 25 paisa coins. Uh, you needn't bother about the present situation, right? Nowadays, 20 paisa coins are not there. <laughs> that is not a botheration. This is you tackle it as a problem for maths, right? So you have 20 paisa coins and 25 paisa coins. Total number of coins is 38. And the total money you have is rupees 8.50. Find the total number of 25 paisa coins. They are not asking both the numbers. Anyway, you can find both, that's not an issue. Right? So, first of all, you do not know which coin is how many in numbers, right? So you first make a supposition of that. Let 
number of points of 20 paisa b x and the number of points of 25 paisa b y very nice according to question the first condition is very readily available that is x plus y is equal to 38 x plus y is equal to 38 okay that's right also what is the other conditions just try to explore this right how many points of 20 pesa you have yeah you have x number of points now if i ask you how much money is there which is constituting of 20 pesa points it will be simply 20x right 20 times x is going to give you the total amount you have coming from 30 paisa points right of course the unit will be in paisa and for 25 paisa how much money you'll be getting this much money so this is the total money you will be having for 20 paisa points and 25 paisa points respectively x and y numbers right but remember this unit is in paisa so total money 8.50 it is in rupees if you convert this into paisa it will be 850 paisa so that will be equal to 850 right so this is the another equation right so i'm i have shown you on the rock so that you can understand this is 850 actually where students commit mistakes in conversion of this they write 8.50 Right, that is a disbalance because left side is in paisa, right side is in rupees, not equal. Right, so now before you proceed solving, you simplify this because you can see that uh, five can be not only five, you have five only, five can be easily cut. Right, so if I cancel five, it will be four x, it will be five y, and then divide this it will be 17 perhaps right 5 will divide it by 1 that is what we have 170 great so now you are getting two different equations right now anyway i have included this in the cross multiplication method but you please do not do it in the cross multiplication method because it will take a lot of time it is better if you do both substitutions right so the process for doing the problems i do not tell this right so I need this part for you as a homework because this is now now you have three process right you have three process if no process is specified please make sure that you apply the suitable process right so whenever you get coefficients one like this it's always better to use the substitutions and if you can equate the coefficients easily to the second method and if you're told then only you apply cross multiplication otherwise you don't multiply this even if this is giving you quick answers okay so anyway good luck for this problem i'm not completing this but this is important remember it okay again another important problem again another important problem a car travels three hours the distance covered by a bus in four hours what do you understand by that there's a car which takes three hours for covering a particular distance and the same distance is covered by a bus in four hours so it's very 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 clear that the speed of the car is little more than the speed of the bus right then in half an hour the car covers 10 kilometer more than the bus find their speeds so very obviously the speeds are the two unknown quantities you have to do it and from the first statement, it is very clear that the speed of the car is more than the speed of the bus. So we'll make a supposition now. Let the speed of the car be speed of the car be x kilometer per hour, and the speed of the bus be y kilometer per hour. Okay, here it is what has to mention that x is greater than one. This is what less what I'm writing. Next very important thing that we try to tell you is that 
if any problem of speed and distance comes, remember always you cannot avoid this particular thing. What does that say? Speed is equal to distance divided by time. So distance is equal to speed into time. Distance is equal to speed into time. Great. So now we are going to generate the equations according to question condition, right? What did we uh, understand from the first statement? The distance of the journey you may say, right? Whether you are traveling by car or traveling by bus. So now here we call this if the car has a speed x kilometer, time taken is 3. What is the distance? It is 3x. And at the same time, if the bus is traveling at the speed of 1, taking 4 hours to cover the same distance, how much you'll get? 4y. Now, will they be equal? Yeah. They are equal because according to question, they are covering the same distance in different hours, right? So, one of the equation is this. And what is the another equation? In half an hour, the car covers 10 km more than the bus. Great. The speed only tells you that the bus is covering y kilometers in one hour. So in half an hour, how much will be the distance? Simply half of that. What is the distance traveled by the car in half an hour? It will be x by 2. Now the distance of the car is 10 km more than the bus. That means this quantity is bigger. So if you add a 10 to it, this will be equal. So that's the answer in question, right? So according to question, we'll directly write this. You need not explain you anything. If you have understood, that's great, right? So what you'll get is, I have taken LCM and I have simplified this. So you are landing with two different equations. Now it's all up to you. You have to simplify this, right? So anyway, I'm uh, showing you just till halfway. Okay, you need not do any replacement. Directly you can get this equations used here, right? So you directly put an equation 1, below x equal. What is below x? It is y plus 20. That is equal to 4 times y. Then it is 3y. Then giving you 60 here. 4y. So what is y equals? 60. y is giving you the speed of 1. Y is giving you the speed of home, is the speed of bus. Now you have to find what is the speed of the car. So you just go on putting this value Y anywhere in the equations. I think this will be better. Right? So 2 in place, what is X equals? 60 plus 20. That is 80. So what is the speed of the car? 80 km per hour. So that's it. That's it. That's an important problem because you have to decode the conditions which is given in the statement form, right? Move on to the next problem. The sum and the difference of the reciprocals of two numbers are respectively 7 by 12 and minus 1 by 12 final numbers. Right? I'm not going to complete these problems for you. I'm just uh, going to the half, right? The sum and the difference of the reciprocals of two numbers. Okay. Let the two numbers be x and y. According to question, reciprocal, what, what do you mean by reciprocal? It's just a reverse, right? Reverse in the sense upside down. Numerator gets transformed denominator, denominator becomes the numerator. So it is x, means x by 1 becomes 1 by x. And their sum is given to be how much? 7 by 12. And what is the difference? What is the difference? X. Sorry. Uh, 1 by X minus 1 by Y is equal to minus 1 by 12. Okay. Here again you have to specify which is bigger. Which is bigger, right? Now you see this difference is negative. Means 1 by Y is bigger. 1 by y is bigger means in actual practice y is smaller. So you have to give this otherwise there will be a conflict whether you will be writing 1 by x minus 1 by y or 1 by y minus 1 by x. Do else equation here, right? 
to make it sure, right? Now, why did he say that I am not uh, doing this problem right at this moment? Because this is not exactly a linear equation, right? It is some equations which is called reducible. Reducible to linear form or linear equation. Reducible to linear equation. So we'll be uh, taking a separate class for this question. So for a moment I'm leaving it. I think by mistake I have included this question here. Okay. So we'll be seeing this in the other video when we discuss these problems. Now you come to this question. 10 students of class 10 took part in math schools. 10 students, right? If the number of girls is 4, more than the number of boys, find the number of boys and the girls who took part in the quiz. Anyway, this is a very easy question. You can just do it by trial and error also. Right. If this number would be bigger, then the alien aromatic might fail. But anyway, we should take its portion and we should try doing this with the mathematical formulations, right? So we do not know what is the number of girls and number of boys. First, our supposition: let number of girls be x, number of boys. That's a better right B. According to question, total number of students is 10. So x plus y becomes 10. Fine. And what is another equation? Number of girls is 4 more than the number of boys. Which number is bigger? x or y? Girl is more than the boys, right? So girl's number is bigger. But how much? 4. So with y, we will be adding 4 to it. So this is another equation. Then you have to solve them. You go on solving them, and very clearly you can see that it is substitution. That will be much more helpful because everything is very very clear. Right? So from two, you put in equation one. What is the value of x? Right, and then you solve it. Right, so twice y will be equal to six. So y will be equal to how much? Three. That leads you to say that x is equal to seven. So there are seven girls, which is four more than the three number of boys of the class. That's fine, great. So that's all that's all for today. Now we have explained all the three methods, right? Next day onwards, next period onwards, I'm going to take some special problem. Probably two periods will be enough, right? So you keep watching and see if you will be having any problem, please directly do contact me on my mails, right? Already I have shared my mail and WhatsApp number earlier in my previous videos. Thank you so much. See you again, right? Bye.